Welcome to another episode of Gamer Heads. Episode number 21. Yep. We're old enough to drink. We're old enough People. to live stream. Too. Yeah, I know. This is this is kind of weird and kind of scary yeah, that we're, we're live streaming. Blackjack! Oh man, this okay. is such a bad idea to live yeah. stream. Yeah, it was. Ooh, Jake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's because 21. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, sure. Got it. I was just thinking of the drinking thing, but yeah, that makes sense. Uh, thanks, for everyone, for joining us. If this is the first time you're hearing our podcast, welcome. If this is the first time you've seen us streamed, well, welcome as well, because this is the first time we've done it. So thanks for watching and listening. Uh, let's go around the room. My name is Roger, a.k.a. Rogue Leader 76 and along with me, to my right... Studley Omelet, Jake, to my right... <laughs> Matt Christian, <laughs> a.k.a. Symbiote. Alright, uh, so we have a big show this week. Uh, so, we're going to be talking about our hot topic, and actually, which is interesting, because I kind of have a feel of where this is going to I I don't even remember it. Oh, well, the hot topic this week is... Don't say it. No? Well, no, All right. we'll All do right. it later. So we'll do the hot topic, uh, and then at the end of this podcast, uh, not live, but when it comes out, when it gets produced, I'm going to be interviewing uh, Mick Waits from Four Horses, uh, yeah. the people that just came out with uh, Kid Trip on 3DS, and it's coming out on Switch soon, too. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, look forward to that. Uh, but Jake, as always, let's start off with what we do every week. And what's something cool or unique that came into Gaming Generations this week? Three do games. Three do games. Three do games, 20 plus of them. <laughs> no, we seriously got 3DO games and a yeah. whole, whole boatload of them, actually. Yeah, and, and it's crazy because they're in, like, these plastic sleeves. That's the coolest part, actually, I think. Not the fact that I saw, like, a whole set of, uh, not, a whole, com people think complete set if I say a whole set, but yeah. you know what I mean, a very large amount of uh, complete in box yeah. uh, 3DO games, that's one thing, but, like, these sleeves, I'm telling you, I don't know. That's hmm. that's yeah. pretty custom stuff. I'm and not, it's and like it, a custom 3DO sleeve? Like an acrylic, yes. yeah. Like, oh, weird. And then yeah. um, one of the, I don't remember what game it was, but you opened it up and you showed me, and one of the controller, it had a controller, a custom controller, and that was sealed. <laughs> what? Yeah. Zadnost. It's like this, um... Uh, like a Russian at the height, oh, of, yeah, height yeah. of the Cold War style <laughs> yes. of, like party game. Yeah. Russia like... and and North Korea was in this game yeah, too. Dude. Like I'm like, what is this game? Yeah. Is this prophecy or what? Yeah, you know, right. Like an FMV like game show style oh. thing. Huh. Yep. Except it's... for the game show style stuff. That's the rest wow. of it's pretty that sounds much. cool. Yeah, and it, it actually another game in there was Psychic Detective, which I had the pleasure of watching a few minutes on YouTube. Oh, it really yeah. interested me when I saw in the back, like tomorrow, Limited Runs doing like uh, an FMV day or whatever oh, with yeah. that Night Trap, Night and Trap. And yeah. the bundle, the newer kind of uh, iteration of those. Yeah. Um, and so it really like I was automatically thought of that because this happened this week, you know. Yeah. And so you know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. And so <laughs> and so uh, that came in hey, and then we uh, took a look at over it or at it, and uh, you know it really it's it's a, ple it's a pleasure. <laughs> you know, you have probably the the most Wisconsin accent on our podcast. Which I is know, hilarious. and I hate when I notice it. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. But yeah, I guess that's. And I'm, you sold a bunch of them already, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's cool. It's even hard for me to remember everything that was there, but yeah, those were the two notable ones, I guess. The FMVs stood out, but you know, classic, yeah, FIFA and stuff like that. You should go. See, they're in their glass case, like right next to the registers. Yeah, probably like fifteen of them right now. Yeah, we got that. About that's crazy. Cool. Yeah, that was yeah. pretty cool. Is that where the you had those? Play and watch games or yeah. whatever, game and watch yeah. things essentially. Yeah. Until yeah. those actually sold too. Yeah. For... You still have the Snoopy one though. The Snoopy one's still there. Right. I, I, next... I could change the price. So the running those. joke on this podcast needs to be the Gordon Freeman statue that you have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no. So for anyone who doesn't know, like I went in there like the other week. Yeah. I've been going to your store for like years essentially. Not regularly, but for years. And I finally noticed there's a Gordon Freeman statue there. And you said you've had it for, like, ever. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's, like, big. It is it's big. It's, like, the size of this mic stand almost. I, yeah. I think it previously acted as the stand for our mannequin with the mm. T-shirts. So oh. it was kind of... Is it, it's like, just, taken you know, apart in the box? 
Is it actually bigger than the I box? Know. You know, I should just <laughs> open know. it and and then sell it at a discount, and then we can have it in the store for a while yeah. and stuff. Like yeah. it's gotten to the point; it has been years. I think it was left over from a plenty of room in here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, you know what else sold uh, today that I was a little disappointed that I I kind of wanted to buy it and I, and I didn't buy it and somebody else bought it the jungle green n64 yeah. really yeah 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 it was kind of cool two looking. controllers the two controllers yeah. was it like could you see through it yeah was it that stuff yeah <clears throat> nice yeah so it was pretty funny because like two guys just came in and like grabbed it off the shelf i'm buying this and then like i don't know they, they spent like over 200 bucks yeah like, buying like within like five minutes like, on nintendo 64 stuff yeah. uh one of them bought also a, a game boy advance not the sp he bought the oh, other Game Boy Advance. Yeah, because then they're asking for a Game Boy Advance player because it was yeah. on our website. That's mm, right. And I was weird. like, I didn't even know that existed. I thought there was a Super Game Boy, which played yeah. just regular Game Boy games. I didn't oh, know yeah. there was an Advance player. I think I remember that. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. I was like, oh, I kind of wanted to buy that. But so I waited too That's something cool so. and unique that left Gaming Generations. And you know what else is cool and unique that left Gaming Generations that I finally mm. picked up? Skyward Sword. Oh, the twenty oh, fifth yeah. anniversary. You could have just borrowed mine. Oh, I know, but this you didn't comes have to give the... Jake money for it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I do you know how much I got it for? Yes, I do. Twenty dollars. Oh my gosh! <laughs> they took the liberty of like taking anything that we had more than three of and putting it on clearance, and I was like, that. Just because oh we gosh, got five so traded amazing. in in a week, it doesn't mean like we can't so, sell them. So your clearance rack was just like all Call of Duty, <laughs> like, Assassin's yes. Creed, and then all of a sudden just a Skyward Sword. That really, yeah, that really is. It kind of was, was the case. I was at their well, Nintendo you know, that's section. Cool, I guess. But... I was in the Nintendo Wii section, and I was like, "Oh, yep, yeah, there's Skyward Sword, forty dollars." And I was just about to leave, and I turned at the. I'm like, "Oh, look at the clearance. Yeah. What? <laughs> what <laughs> like, literally half off. I'm buying this. Yeah, I had to tell him like I. Really, like that's cool. You went out of your way and like did a task and whatever, but yeah, dang. yeah. but then <laughs> you did your task too well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then I said, to, and not only that, it was the 25th anniversary one, so it came with the orchestra CD oh, too. Shut yeah. up! <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble. I swear, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and then, and then I said to him on the way out, I'm like, Jake, I finally got this game I wanted for a long time for twenty dollars. He's like, what? <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't oh crap yeah. that's what he said no. and oh, all the co-workers were beaten then yeah yeah <laughs> and then and then all hell broke loose oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that was pretty funny that's cool I'm how's happy the how's it. the new uh role going too by the way it's fine it's yeah. i'm a busy dude i guess yeah but it's i'm happy to sit here and relax i can tell you that much cool i i don't i don't dislike it i don't mean to say i have to get away from it but yeah, yeah. no it's new so yeah <laughs> nice Thanks. Matt. Matt, yes. you've been busy. Well, yeah, and no. You have not even played any games. <laughs> I haven't That's played any games. That's how busy you've been. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's how much of a gamer I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I worked on a game jam, um, the Cat and Octopus Jam. That looked really awesome. Which, yeah, I can show it to you after this. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it was a two-day game jam where the only rules were, one, uh, had to have a cat and octopus in the game. And that was pretty much the only rule. Other than, like, some of the standards, like, no pornography and, like, yeah. obvious. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I made a game called Catfishing. Yeah. Where you are playing as a cat at the end of a fishing hook. Well, it's not a hook. It's, like, a clamp holding the cat on the back, like, where like where a mama cat would, like, pick it up and stuff. Holding it, and then it shoots stars at a giant uh, octopus. And does the octopus arms move? Because yeah, that's so and then cool. it's like the cat's arms are all physics based. So like oh, when you move the nice. when you move the cat around, he just like flails and stuff. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> he has no muscles or anything like. Yeah, that. no, he just like gets pulled around and stuff, and like wow. uh, you can restrict like where his arms goes. And, like, I didn't at first, so you'd yeah. pull him back and his arms would just, like, <laughs> go all the way around looping, and it just looks super gross. Wow. Yeah. That's... Because you could... I did that with his head, too. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I... But you hand drew all those, right? You drew the cat, you drew the octopus, yeah. right? Yeah, so I did it in the same style that I'm doing my, like, next game, yeah. which is all, oh, like, yeah, hand drawn. that will. Yeah, Was it's I all down there, that? otherwise I'd show, show yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I did that. Cool. Um, I did some drawing of the whale character for the game. Um, it's a whale wearing jetpack. Um, yeah, wearing cool. a jetpack. And yeah, it's pretty much it. Yeah, I think for the dev. I mean, the the jam took up a lot of time. Yeah, two or three days, two two and a half. Yeah, 
But that was cool. I was really impressed with what you came up with for two days. Uh, yeah, I think once a month I'll still do the the jams because nice. it's good like to get practice in that do way. Do you think there'll ever be something that you're like I should keep going with this, or do you really leave um, them for what? With the cat to be? and octopus game, there's actually like a gameplay mechanic I didn't get in that I really wanted to get in. Um, since the cat is at the end of like a like a line, um, when you move him, he just moves the whole line and the cat with him, right? So like it's just like normal movement and stuff. Sure. Yeah. What I wanted it was. The cat was at the end of the line, and you kind of moved the tip of the line. So when you'd like flick it forward, the cat would kind of like flick up and forward, and then he, like he'd be pivoting on and the with end the of the line. Yeah, yeah. And then when you shot, your your shots wouldn't go straight; they'd like arc. Oh, okay. So to hit the octopus, you'd have to like flip the cat forward oh, and arc cool. the thing, rather than just shooting straight. Because yeah. right now you just like aim at it and you just hit the space bar like a bunch of times and just shoot. <laughs> Um, there's That's a lot cool, more like yeah. skill and timing and stuff if you were like swinging them. So nice, but Wait. yeah, maybe sometime. Cool, It'll probably be one. I'll, I'll probably just like make Minecraft and I'll be like, I just want to keep going on this. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks really good. I retweeted all your. Uh, so yeah. you can come out to Thanks. Gamerheads podcast or Gamerheads PC actually our Twitter account and see all your. Yeah. Or you can go to yours. Too. I th- think. Did I put out the vlog before the last podcast? When was uh, it? I think so. I think so. But just again, I'm doing game dev vlogs. So if you go to YouTube, look up Subject Matter Games. I have a monthly vlog. So yeah, yeah, it's cool. So um, we're probably gonna be light on the news this week because of the fact that we have the uh, interview at the end of this podcast. Uh, <clears throat> so it's not too long. But let's go into the Gamerheads news flash. Uh, so one thing I want to talk about was the release of uh, Hellblade. Yeah. And we talked a little bit about this. Uh, so the game has an interesting mechanic, the permadeath mechanic. And Matt, that, why don't you go into that a little bit? Well, so... And then, and then the other, the other piece. The permadeath about. thing, I think, is false. Oh, really? So people freaked out that it was a real thing, and then kind of backtracked on. It. Oh. Okay. Because I think the dev said it was a thing, and then people tested it and realized it wasn't. So I'll explain it after yeah. this, but it wasn't happening. And then everyone was like, "Oh, the dev just kind of lied to us." So that was kind of like <laughs> a real strange thing. Oh, crazy! So I'm going to explain this based on the idea that like this is not in the game officially, right? Yeah. Maybe after this, someone comes out and says, oh, it actually is a thing, so who knows at this point, because none of us have played it. Right. But, um, so the game, supposedly, when you die, uh, has, like, this rot thing that starts engulfing Senua, I think is the name of the yeah. main character. So she start. it starts on her hand, and it's, like, this black, like, not goop, but, like, like she's decaying, kind of. Okay. And each time you die, it slowly, like, creeps up her body and stuff. Yeah. And if it covers her, supposedly at the point it would cover her, that would be like not only is this game over every time you're dying this is happening, but this would be like full game over and it would delete your save file <laughs> and force you to restart from the beginning of the game. So it's a permadeath that's based on like the number of times you die. I was going to say like it's a <clears throat> kind of uh extravagant way of basically saying you have this many lives yeah. until you're dead forever. Yeah. Yeah. And at the Well, but then it deletes uh, unless, not only that, but deletes your save. Unless also like the points of death I mean, mattered. So like you'd decay more if Oh, oh that'd be man. Terrible. Yeah. Uh, um wow. and then and then it starts eating away at your hard drive on your PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the like the kind of joke and meme that was going around Twitter was like, "Man, I can't believe if you die in the new Uncharted, it reformats your C drive." Like, <laughs> just ridiculous things. That's hilarious. But yeah. then something else happened with uh, the the release, right? Yeah, and we might talk about it more in a future podcast okay. for a hot topic, possibly. Yeah, because we were planning on discussing reviewing stuff in the future. Yeah, but um. So, again, I mentioned that in a previous podcast that I listen and watch Jim Sterling on YouTube, who's an independent game critic, used to work at Destructoid, I think. Um, So he published his review the, like, morning all these reviews came out. I think it was this last Wednesday or Tuesday or something like that. 
I think it's Tuesday. Yeah. And <clears throat> he posted it, you know, 1 a.m. or something like that. And I, I woke up and I usually wake up and watch YouTube. So I saw there was a video from him at like 4 a.m. or something. And it was about uh, kind of like a little bit of a retraction. And essentially the, the thing that happened is he was reviewing his, the game and got to a point where a very rare, although he's not the only one who's gotten this at this point, a rare bug happened where he was in a point where it auto saved him into a spot where he couldn't go forward and he couldn't go back. So yeah. he had to restart the game. Um, and at that point, before that, he was planning on giving the game about a seven or an eight. And when that happened, he dropped his review score to a one and posted it. So it it's came a out, broken game. Yeah. So it came out as a one out of 10 because he hit a broken spot and in my opinion, didn't want to restart it, you know? Yeah. Um, but like I said, he did kind of retract that. Talk to Metacritic because Metacritic had posted a one out of ten, which is severely. Good. I mean, is he like so? His score goes into Metacritic. Oh yeah. Score? Oh, I didn't yeah. Know. Wow. So he had to, you know, contact Metacritic and be like, "Hey, I pulled a bad," you know, because he kind of had a knee jerk response yeah. to this thing. It is like a bad thing, but he said in his video, if he gives it a one out of ten, he's rating it on the same level as some of these games we've talked about. The uh, Good old revenge or whatever that biker game you made me play back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Like I think a one out yeah. of ten is like that or lower. Yeah, yeah. So and that game truly well, is broken. Yeah, I I think it. I don't know. I don't, maybe I'm not allowed to have an opinion in this case. But nope, you're not. I feel <laughs> as if that takes away from both the credibility of him as a writer and the credibility <clears throat> of the position that he's in. Yeah, it does. I think you realize that somewhat. Yeah, well, I mean, in taking back what he said, like, he should almost stuck by his word, and... Well, but uh, but then what? I mean, like, then people say you gave it a one? Like, really? It's on the same par as... Then he owns Then he owns it up. I, I don't know. I, th- I just think it's weird. I mean, I know, like, anybody can say something wrong and then retract their story or... or not everybody. It, I guess. I'm in, in most cases in the <laughs> Not media everybody. or whatever. Like, Seems you know. like Twitter's. But don't you think that's kind of like the world that we live in right now? That, you know, social media, Twitter, Facebook, things like that. People are just, without thinking, they go right out But that's to, the thing. He's a professional critic. There's a lot of professional people like, that's what that he does like, say for things living. that they shouldn't on Twitter. No, but you can't if you're the president of a company. Isn't that basically what this guy is? It, doesn't he own his own enterprise? Well, his own brand, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How can he get away with it? It just bothers me. I don't know. I mean, he, you know, if he wants to post whatever he wants, he can. I, yeah. you I know, agree. And if he... It's, you know, if he wants to retract it, he can also. I think, like, the thing that's a little weird to me is for him to own up to it and be like, yeah, I had a knee-jerk response. This probably isn't the best idea. I retracted everything, and I'm putting out possibly a better score. Well, better than a one, right? Yeah. Uh, then seeing a bunch of people and stuff on Twitter go, I applaud you for doing such a thing. <clears throat> like, you realized your mistake. And, like, it's like, yeah. And then people would, you know obviously criticize him in his own video you know he'd be like i messed up and then they'd be you messed up which is redundant and stupid yeah but Mm -hmm. then he got mad at them for doing that and it's like there's Mm -hmm. some like back and forth on both sides here that seem kind of weird to me yeah but i admitted it yeah well then why are you mad at me for saying it's true what (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. so it's a strange thing but like i said in the future we talked about possibly doing a review hot topic yeah thingy. only in gaming man only in gaming i swear like limited runs really? catching flack right now i won't go into no, the details but I mean, or whatever but you don't think there, like stuff like this forums. happens in movie i mean movie critic reviews? i was thinking I about that like but what what critic so. goes into a movie and it's like this movie's broke well like, that's true <clears> well <throat> unless a, like unless, unless a plot's broken it would it would be like if if a movie reviewer went in to watch a movie and the the real melted halfway through the movie <laughs> and then they base their review on that yeah because yeah. you can put in another reel of the same movie but start I, it from I'm the sure. beginning and rewatch it and then grade it you know what i'm saying yeah but don't you think i mean this has to happen where some a reviewer goes to see like a movie or a play or something like that and based on what happened to them earlier in the day let's say they get into like traffic jams and oh stuff yeah like. so they're in a really bad mood they yeah. go see this movie and they're like this is a terrible movie and they bite this bad review and <laughs> yeah. then like two weeks later they watch it again like that wasn't so bad why yeah 
Why, you know, why there's, do I think it was There's kind a of a reason I personally don't listen to reviews based, <laughs> to base my purchases on anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it's because of that. Yeah. yeah. As yeah. professional as you want to be, there's still going to be some bias. Yeah, there. absolutely. Yep. It, was, it goes the other way, too. Like, you might be having a great day, right? Everything's going your way, and you're like, oh, I'm so happy. Hey, this is a great movie. This No Man's Sky is <laughs> game of the year. <laughs> yeah. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Speaking of which, good transition. Uh, yeah. They came up with a new uh, patch, actually. New DLC, I should say, for free to fix their what game. Else? Oh, <laughs> no, but what else? Because they already did that. Oh, yeah, but this one like allows people to do um, jumps like from one place to another. Oh, if they get And it adds more parts or... of the story. No, oh. like like distance-wise. Like, oh, sure. So you don't have to fly forever. Hey, that just happened now? Yeah, it came out like Dang. this week. Yeah. Uh, the last one was like base building. Yeah, base stuff. building, yeah. That's this this one's more about story, they said, and then also allows the user to... Jump from one section to another very quickly. Uh, I will say I have not played it since I got frustrated with <laughs> since it. Since you bought it after I told you not to buy it? I got it for $10, though. <laughs> Still. <laughs> Still. <laughs> but you know what game I did buy? And I, we'll talk more about it. Uh, I did buy Elite Dangerous, and that's the game I wanted No Man's Sky to be. Okay. Uh, and then one last thing I'll quickly touch upon is that Super Nintendo Classic, the SNES Classic, is going to be available for pre-order at the end of the month. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, what? Yeah. Like, Nintendo confirmed it, but I don't know if they gave a date. No, they didn't. I just said at the end of the month. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's actually good for me to know, because once they're allocated, they really are. That's why I was so stunned that Walmart put out those pre-orders, but then yeah. I guess that makes sense, because yeah. they can't But you didn't them. get any of the NES classics. Not no, and the first batch we did get get like five. You did or whatever, but then we couldn't get it like ever. Oh, even, even it never when came. everybody else, but even other people got it. Like Walmart would get it. Yeah, I know, Target but you didn't. It. You didn't no. actually. But you had them on order, but they never came to your store. Exactly. Uh, well, see. we ordered, you know, way more. I mean, basically, there was no guarantee for anything, so we yeah. just put our names down <laughs> you for did you get know, a, as many as possible. Two uh, DS XL. So. Yeah, one. <laughs> And it, it, it we had still to, there? since we only got one, we had to pay for shipping, so it cost us more than what we sell it for. <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks, Nintendo. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Nice. Well, that's all that I had for the news. Uh, let's take a break here, and then when we come back, we'll jump into our hot topic. Hello, GamerHeads. This is Roger. Follow us on our YouTube channel, GamerHeads Podcast, where you can catch all our latest episodes, Let's Plays, and you can also catch us live on Wednesday nights for a segment we call Kick Roger's Butt at Video Games. That's GamerHeads Podcast on YouTube. Welcome back to Gamerheads. Uh, this week's topic is actually something that Matt and I talked about. That I don't remember. That you don't remember. And this week's topic is uh, does the, or how the week, uh, weekly, the yearly release of AAA games uh, oh, makes yeah. the gaming industry better. Yeah. How does, the, how do they make it better? Yeah. Jake. Yeah, Jake. How I just, thought you guys just, talked about We it. just talked about how... I thought you guys... We just about talked it. about how your clearance rack is full of Call of Duties and Assassin's Creed's and Maddens and... Mm-hmm. Yearly re- releases of the same game over and over and over Now, again. Jake, tell us why those are good. Why they're good? Yes. <laughs> He's not oh, going to tell man. you why they're good. This is why I picked oh, this topic. What a challenge. <laughs> Do I have to or well, can I say First of all, you knew this topic. Opinion. I stopped by you and told you this topic. Kind of-ish. Yeah, 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 you know, I it's... You. it's <laughs> you I have think... your, whole, your whole answer on that little no. sheet of paper. Um, yeah. <laughs> no. All right. Why are they good? Yeah. Why? How does it help the gaming industry? In the same way, I suppose, in any industry, you have like the 
forerunners and they're usually money grubbing people who cheat the system in order to wait a second <laughs> wait a second i don't know i don't know okay it depends because obviously you have your base there are plenty of people who never would have played video games if it weren't for call of duty and then eventually they find their katamari or whatever they are very big titles that draw a crowd that aren't necessarily only strict hardcore gamers mm-hmm Okay. Maybe maybe the Maddens a little more so yeah. than the, like Assassin's Creeds and Call of Duty. Yeah. Well, and the, the, that's yeah. The thing is, like for the AAA titles, you certainly don't have to be a hardcore gamer. In fact, most people who game are casual and they only play the AAA titles. I mean, casual gamers aren't ones to play like Siberia Complete Collection or whatever. It's yeah. Just... yeah, but that's interesting that you said that because I find ga- uh, ca- casual gamers. God, I can't talk tonight. <laughs> Casual gamers are not the ones that are buying the you know the yearly releases. They're the ones that buy Candy Crush and just play that game forever and ever and ever. Right? But that's still like a huge title. But like, if you, you know, that if mainstream. you have your core audience buy your title, and then you have a certain percentage of other population come in and buy that title because they saw some you know commercial. They went and saw the Assassin's Creed movie, and that sure looked like a good old time. Yeah, because they love. Michael Fassbender, whoever was in that movie. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, they're like, well, I should try this game and then pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, it, the early releases of games, the uh, like, I guess it depends what we're talking about. If we're talking about, like, Madden games, those games really bother me because there's nothing different from year to year except for roster updates. And really, some mechanics. Okay. I would agree. If you were, like, a hardcore Madden head, then, yeah, you'd probably be like, yeah, this is changing. Um, but, but I think Madden's also a good example of where there used to be good competition in the, the NFL, like gaming. Are you okay, Jake? <laughs> I'm just, I'm, continue. He's going to just blow up in your face after you're know, done with this. So just keep going. So it used to be that 2K Sports used to make, uh, uh, yeah. football games yep. too. And yeah. then when they had the last one, I think it was 2K5. And that was a great football game because not only did it, obviously play the game, but also it gave you the experience of like watching uh, ESPN every, every week at the end, every week you could watch yeah. ESPN and watch other games and they gave highlights from other games. Mm-hmm. It was really a cool mechanic that Madden never incorporated. And then when EA just got the license for the NFL, I mean, I feel like they don't have to feel like they have to be uh, innovative. Every, oh, they paid every for year. it. Oh, I know. But would you... Would you rather have that as a as a um, what do they call that the the play service or the the what do, what do they call it when it's just a play calling? No, 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 no. When you the announcers? No, <laughs> when you can you can buy a game, but then you just buy a like premium. Yeah, you buy like a premium, like a season pass or something like that, and then you can get up, uh, updates. And then instead of coming out with a new game, yeah, but... they would just come up with updates every year to that game. But that they, would be like a roster thing. Like mm-hmm. that yeah. makes sense. But yes, that's what I'm saying. They I like mean, they, then why why spend why? I mean, the thing is, I don't do like spending update. sixty dollars every year for the for the same game, just you, different roster. They you, do update more than just the roster, though. Yeah, you okay. actually. Not, yeah, they do. <laughs> but like, okay. I, wa- I was gonna have a point in regards to the fact <laughs> that, like, actually, AAA titles, generally speaking, because the market share is going towards indie titles and stuff like that, not towards or whatever. Obviously, AAA titles have a large share, but we all saw in the past few years, like. A, ba- a Battlefield that didn't sell in Hardline or a Call of Duty that didn't sell in mm. the last one or uh-huh. um, uh, an Assassin's Creed that didn't sell in, in Syndicate and the one before that. You know what I mean? So, like, uh, the, it's not it's not always a guarantee or whatever, uh, it, it, but it is always a guarantee for money. But the thing yeah. is, for Madden, for NHL and those titles, they're the only ones that consistently – there is no year. Even if there's no improvement and they really didn't improve the game, the consumers say, I want it. Like, it's the craziest thing that Madden is the best-selling game year after year at our store. Mm-hmm. It still blows my mind, actually. Yeah. You know? Um, and, like, my whole argument originally was going to be how, like, they're bursting their own bubble by having that annual release. They but are. Then you... <clears throat> to – a certain extent, yes, their own vestiges or whatever towards you know, yeah, like their their own um, uh, IPs, I suppose. But like, it also opens a door for other games, I, like even like crappy ones, like 
would would a Warhammer shooter exist if it weren't for like Gears of War? You know what I mean? Or or like um, I mean they would or whatever, but I don't know. I just I feel like there's plenty of games that sell half a million or less copies that exist because those AAA titles exist, so they create a market for people to buy like, those. Like generic shooter World War Two whatever that we had one of you guys play for. Oh the, yeah. For the yeah. garbage bin yeah, game. What was that? See, Enemy Front? Enemy order? Front? That was a terrible yeah. game. See, that's totally okay. Like, I have this game called, like, what is it? Like, me- Honor of Duty Metal or something like that. Like, I, it's seriously the most generic game ever. It's, it's not Medal like, of Honor? Cookie cut out. No, it's literally like this, like, Call of Duty Medal of Honor, you know. Rip off? Yeah, it's like. Really? Yeah, it's. it's but it's is that good? Horrib- I love it. No, I love no, no, it. no, no, no. So no, bad. I mean, is it's that just good for the industry? down and whatever. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is that really good for the industry that now. Oh, hey, they're making lots of money on it. I'm going to put out trash out there, too. I think it's good for the industry right now to have uh, as a diverse uh, selection of choices as it has. Absolutely. Really? This is this is coming from the same people. You, too. What? The same people that were like, do you know how much trash is on st- stream or Steam, Roger? You know how yeah. Much tra- yeah. But you, know how, you know how much of it comes... That's what I said. But yeah. you, know, you know how much of it is a yearly <laughs> release? None of them. <sighs> from a big company? From a AAA? They don't... <laughs> I'm but gonna say it. They don't put out garbage. No, no, Madden, I know. Madden, Call of Duty, saying... Assassin's Creed. Uh, yes. Assassin's Creed, like what it was. Yeah, yeah that one or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. They had to update pretty hard. They're hardcore, not like but... garbage games, though. Yep. You know, and that's the thing. Like they, they always produce something of quality. Okay, I'll say like... it's quality games, but it's it's uh, it bothers me that. I have to spend sixty dollars every year if I want to get the new roster. And you don't have to. That's the darn yeah. thing of it. The people are, do, and that's why it exists, man. It's like why stupid movies exist with like, or sorry, I won't say mean, Adam Sandler okay. or whatever. Why but... Transformers exist? Yeah. Like I've seen like the oh, yeah. first one and like none of the others. I buy like one Madden every like ten years. It's the same mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, because we're reasonable consumers. And but if I'll yeah. come back, and in I'm ten... not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back in ten years, and Transformers Seven will be on the screen, and I'll be like, "Yep." Well, like, Same thing. I, I basically, basically, <laughs> it go, comes down to this: when a customer asks me why is it this, I say because that's what people pay for it, and and that's my answer to this: like, whoa, do triple are triple A titles good for the industry? <laughs> like, whoa. So, no, yeah. yearly. I'm not saying that triple A. No, I'm not. gonna change I'm saying, the question. No, you're not. Straw man. <laughs> Straw man. <laughs> not changing the question. <laughs> yearly releases of 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 IPs. Is that is that really a good? Good for the industry. When it's over a kill, they notice it and then they take a step back. Yeah, they do. I with think. Assassin's Creed, maybe. And Call of uh, mm-hmm. not Call of Duty. Not what, Call of Duty. What was they it? Just, Battlefield. They they did take a year and a half after Hardline, which yeah. was a year. Call and of half Duty. After they just four. added another dev to the cycle to yep. make it a three year development oh, yep. time for each game. But I still think it draws in a massive amount of hype to the industry in general, regardless. Like. Even if it's a garbage game, people are like, do you hear about the new Call of Duty? Oh, the new Call of Duty, the new Call of Duty. And, like, no one goes, hey, did you hear about that generic shooter coming out this this end of year? Hey, did you hear about... Like, no one talks Unless about that Unless you listen stuff. to Gamerhead. That's why half the time... That's true. Yeah. <laughs> when I go up to people and I'm like, hey, you really should play that Hyper Light Drifter game. It's amazing. They're like, that what now? Yeah. And I'm like, it's like Call of Duty. And they're like, okay. And I'm like, except it's good. And it's not like Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Interesting. No, I. I mean, I, I see what you're saying. Um, like, why is it empirically bad? Just curious. Well, I just think uh, yeah, my problem. What? I, I was gonna say that's a good question. Just question. No, I think I think the thing I have a problem with it is that um, where's the creativity? Like, I want something. You know, being something different, right? And so. I don't. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> um, and and sometimes you know you get that out of out of the smaller industries. I think of the smaller game devs uh, companies. Mm-hmm. Um, but and it's because they spend a lot of time working on these games. When you have like a, I'm going to use Call of, uh, Call of Duty and Madden, right? So like when you have games like that coming out every year after year after year, mm-hmm. like they're not spending enough time to create something u- brand new and unique. I'm not saying that there's not new mechanics because there are new mechanics, but not like. Oh my gosh! I can't believe how awesome this is compared to last year. This is like way different. What, this is so like creative. What, what do you consider brand new? 
Yeah. Like this is gonna open a whole okay. can of worms. Ooh, but ooh. I actually ooh, ooh. <laughs> I feel like ooh, I feel like ooh. a kid now. Uh, no, actually, tang, tang, so, tang, wow, wow, so I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with what I said with the the e, the the two K five right. So one of the thing that I really want out of the Madden games is I want the experience where I feel like I'm actually like uh, in, in like. Inside, like the the whole. They tried that the helmet cam. No, not the helmet cam. I'm talking about like the presentation, right? So, like when Madden first came out on mm-hmm. the, uh, not first came out, but when Madden first came out on the PlayStation, like they would have like actual videos of like the um, announcers and stuff like that, and they would come back to them after every game, and they give like highlights. So I'm like, this is really cool, and they kind of. I mean, I know that they still have the announcers, and they're trying to update. Like they actually had in the last Madden game for. PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, they had the announcers go in and record things during the season so they can incorporate them into the game yeah. throughout the game, which is cool. But I want to have like this whole full experience of like I'm actually a team in this whole season and there's other games going on around me. And I want like that. The 2K5 game was just so well done with that. And that was, you know, again, 2005. And I feel like we haven't even come close to that. And it's just the same thing every year no nothing creative like that so i think what you're thinking of like creative is like it you can't compare that to like a fictional game right because call of duty call of duty every year can be like hey kevin spacey's taking over the world from his moon base on on the moon and he blasted off to mars go hunt him down and kill him and and madden teams like well well shit i don't know (laughs) Peyton Manning is here. I don't know. Like it's based on real people. I know. So I, know. I know. I'm not like, saying that. There's but only so much they can do there. They but can then, do more of the experience of like I feel like I'm actually in like a season. Like I'm actually like. But they do that every it, year. They change the that. Every if year. you compare, they do. You know what they yeah. do? You know what they do every year? They have like the tweets of like you know real people <laughs> with fake tweets. <laughs> Skip Bayless. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but they also have like they it's have the same garbage. Uh, no, oh. they have new they have new commentator things and new they, like oh, announcer okay. parts yeah. and okay. And and they see, change that up. They every still little have bit, their cycle. Bit, They'll yeah. change up physics. Or well, that's that's asking, really creative. You're asking like you're like, hey, last year's Phil Nance wasn't Phil Nance enough. Make him more <laughs> Nancy this year. <laughs> no, have you played any of the two K basketball games? Like you play those yes. games and they talk about like the game that happened before. They talk. I mean. Like that, like they actually that it, yes, literally because yeah. they have perfected the gameplay so much that the best thing they can do is continually improve that side of things. I know, Whereas but that's Madden, my point. But no, Madden. I'm telling you, dude. If you compare even three years ago, like if you want to talk about like a a regular developer cycle or whatever, if you look at a Madden from three years ago at any spectrum, from 2005 to 2002 or 2008 to 2005 or what, whatever the case might be, you're gonna notice an actual okay. difference in graphics. Graphics in in, in uh. In a contact, in yes. in like um, all all of those things are improved every year, and uh, it's, it, not it's, always you can't notice it so not much always. unless you play it all the time. Not always. If you played it all the time, you'd realize how much better like interceptions are nowadays compared yeah. to back that, in the day when you just hit Y that, or whatever. That's like like when you play a fighting game. You know, and then you watch some pro play it, and they're like, "Oh, they know all the like little tweaks and stuff of the controller," and you're like, "Oh, I was just smashing buttons." Like, if I was just smashing buttons and I play a different game, a different Tekken game, like if Tekken 8 came out today and I just bought 7, I'd be like, ooh, pretty. I'm going to smash these buttons. That's what they played off of. But since basketball, like, no offense to it or whatever, I'm just saying, like, it is kind of repetitive. So once they got, like, the dynamic ball control down and those kinds of things, like even facial animations and actual movements of the players, they captured all of it. Like, what else do you have left? You that, worry about but game. That's you know, what I'm saying side. with like, like game fictional, presentation. fictional stuff. They're not gonna just like throw a jetpack on someone like Call of Duty. <laughs> no, but <laughs> Call of Duty just tossed in jetpacks. Okay, they are guilty. <laughs> I will agree with you, Roger. <laughs> they are guilty there. But you know, but one thing that like the okay, I'll go with the uh, the two K games, the basketball games, right? Is one thing that they did try was creating this like my career. So you create this character. I hated it. <laughs> with the I hated garbage it. Story. I hated it. But <laughs> it was like a it was a unique idea. And they actually started doing that with the wrestling games too. I know you don't like the wrestling games. I, I, I love I love them. But uh, see, well, yeah, but those I have, are just as bad. <laughs> I, I know. Hold on, I'm not a, I'm not happy with it. I don't want to have to buy a brand new game every year. But what they I would update want... their entrance music. No, hold sixty dollars. Hold on, sorry, I don't sorry. want I don't want to spend. That's my problem. I don't want to spend sixty dollars on it. I want to be able to buy like a yearly pass 
every year for like half the cost, and then they give me updates. Like there are season passes, but it's only good. They'll do that when people refuse to spend sixty bucks. I know. A year. I yeah, know. Yeah, but I, then they'll stop doing the gameplay updates because they're not going to update gameplay for an old game. Yeah. In the way that they do between Maddens, like like That's a, good point. a good example is like one of the Maddens recently. I think the like big thing because if you look at the when a Madden is announced and talked about, there's always like one core thing they talk about. We're really revamping this, and usually what happens is like one year they're like we're going to really revamp quarterbacks and passing and stuff and then the next year is like we're going to revamp defense and then the next year is like mm-hmm. special teams and then they kind of like start going over it again and one of the years was like oh you, we revolutionized kicking and it was just like they just changed a little slider thing on it but like <laughs> yeah that's like that's their changing is their tweaking is just like I, I get that but yeah okay no i get it i, I get i see what you're saying yeah i also agree that like it doesn't need to come out every year yeah yeah but and if people I, want it, they're not going to stop. And that's the thing of it. It's like I can't even ar- – and a note that I haven't even really argued that it's good, just that it's not bad. <laughs> I don't think it's necessarily bad, but I do think that uh, smaller studios, which I think, you know, obviously have to work harder to try to make it into the into the industry. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of times they're kind of just a flash in a pan because they, they don't come up with a yearly game because it takes them so long to come up with a game yeah. and, and new games. Well, I mean, Naughty Dog and them don't come up with a game every year. Yeah, that's true. They've got, like, what, two teams kind of working on games Yeah, in their, yeah. their group? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, even Red Dead, for how huge they are, I mean, they have so many different development groups. But or, Did I say Red Dead? Yeah, yeah I meant Rockstar. Rockstar yeah. Oh, okay. I did <laughs> no, you Rockstar. said Red Dead. Uh, but I know you meant Rex. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, but still, for how, how they have, you know, San Diego and, and mm-hmm. Vancouver, whatever, like all those places. Same but, with Ubisoft, too. But Ubisoft does release a lot of titles. They do. I mean, Rockstar. Yeah. Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Isn't that them? Even that's every year. And, but and then the Far Cry. Mans and Far Cry's. And, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. But so Far, Cry, really busy. Far Cry is a little closer to the, like, every Naughty years, Dog yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and those are individual teams working on it though. But then you have like your your really triple A titles. Like you can't say you can't say it. It's like that because we're talking. I guess going back to Rockstar Grand Theft Auto or or Red Dead Redemption. Like those are titles where like you can't be like whoa these great games that sell ten million copies. Or like they're what like they're pretty good for gaming. I'd say. Do yeah. You, do you. So we said what's good about releasing every year, what's bad about not just indies, but AAA is releasing every five years, let's every say. Every five years? Yeah, let's say why. what's the problem with Grand Theft Auto coming out every five years? Why shouldn't, <laughs> why shouldn't it? You know, it's a funny thing that you say that, though. Did you know that this last month, Grand Theft Auto V was on the top of the charts? <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair... That they keep coming is, out with new content. That game is getting, like, massive amounts of content yeah. still. See, like, that's what I'm crazy. talking about. Like, how cool is that, right? Now... Yeah, but you can also, like, fly a jet and jump out of it and then, like, <laughs> swan dive to the ground and land in a pool and be like, I'm okay. Plus, In football, you can throw a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, people bought it three different times. They bought it that's on true. their PC and then they yeah, bought it on their, that's true. their old console and, and then they were the like, we're never yeah. going to make it on the new console. Yeah. I literally remember them saying And it's that. got those microtransactions in it. If you want to buy the coin to get stuff in it, you can do that. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, so I think the the problem if they don't have AAA games. Oh, three against I was just going to say, to be fair, Madden also has card pack, packs that you can buy. Yeah. So that's also microtransactions. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, same with the the baseball game that I bought. See, no, that's that's a game that I, I haven't bought a baseball game in a long time. See, the problem is you buy them every year, and then no, you're like, oh, last year was no, so much I better. Don't. Brock Lesnar no. looks way more jacked. <laughs> <laughs> like He's so swole. Reference. Yeah. He, his pecs don't look as good this year. Yeah, yeah. No, Two out of I, ten. No, I, well, actually. Retraction. The wrestling actually, game is not. actually, that's not a good example, because I end up buying one every year. I'm like, ooh, that sounds really cool. <laughs> so maybe maybe that is a bad example. The pectoral, f- yeah, but, the but, pectoral physics on his finishing move are off. Yeah. Yeah, but you're thinking about buying a Switch too, Roger. <laughs> oh, what? I what? am. I am. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Woody Woodpecker <laughs> over here. Okay, anyway. Uh, so if games don't, if, if they don't have AAA games releasing every year, or every if they release every five years, then I think people are going to say, why should I even buy this console anymore, right? Because uh, it doesn't have any games on it. Uh, I mean, that was... The, so let's just say, like, you, you bought a PlayStation, right? 
Mm-hmm. And let's say that um, a developer that's really only exclusive to PlayStation says, All right, we're going to come out with a game mm-hmm. once, and then five years from now we're going to come out with another game, another five years and come out with another game. Yeah. Then I think people would say, I don't know if there's enough... I mean, maybe they would. You mean like Zelda and the Wii U? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was going to say, or 3D Mario and 2D Mario. Like, I know they're still Mario, but still they're so different that that's exactly what they but do. It's a like problem. a one a generation. Yeah, but that was the problem with the Wii U, is that they felt that there wasn't enough games on it. That's so what I'm saying. That's early. why releasing every year is such a good thing. I know, but that's, that's what I'm saying. So that Switch has I, Madden pe- every year. People would say, I don't know if I really want to buy the system because it doesn't have... Enough games on it, right? I mean, that's what that's that's the opposite of coming that, out with a yearly and release. And maybe that's Nintendo's fault, though, and exclusively Nintendo's fault because they want to control the the uh, titles that are on their hardware yeah. so much that, like, yeah, unless you get your sh- basic shovelware that they just make so many copies, whatever. Mm-hmm. And even by shovelware, I mean like Just Dance. Sorry, no, yeah. but, but you no, know, I, 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 the Wii yeah. did yeah. have a lot of shovelware. Yep. It had a lot of shovelware because a lot of people bought that system. So, but. like, out of the AAA titles, though, they really controlled that. I mean, they yeah. gave Mass Effect a shot and Darksiders and whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? They they gave it a shot. But ultimately, because they control those IPs, they, they can only afford to put that many out. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but I think I think Nintendo's problem, though, with, with like, uh, Darksiders on, on the Wii U... Uh, and even some of the like even Skyrim on the Switch is the fact that that these games have been out for such a long time that people are like, I already have that game. Why should I buy it right. again? I think the Switch might be a little bit different because now people are saying, like Ukulele came out on the other two systems first. Oh yeah, and now it's coming out on Switch, and people are like, well, I wanted to hold off and buy it on Man, the Switch yeah. versus on the other. Switch systems. is leading the way though on a few titles. Like I know Binding of Isaac is going to come out now on PS4 because of the success on the Switch. Oh, wasn't out oh, on PS4. It? Well, digitally, but oh, it's going to get a physical see, see. copy. Sure. Okay. And like right now, of course, that's Not, booming. I mean, I get that because like I purchased um, Abduction. Well, I was a Kickstarter backer of yeah. Abduction, the game from the creators of Myst for yeah. PC. And I got a physical copy for Windows and Mac, I think, and a digital download for Steam. And now they announced that it's coming out for PlayStation with PSVR support. And to me... That's better than the three copies of it I already have. And it's like, well, that's the one I want. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've played some of it, but sweet. I got I got a new graphics card. So, so you're I can excited play it. about it. You don't feel like they burned you. No, I mean a little bit. You know, yeah. I kind of I went back to my receipt and was like scrolling through it, hoping there was a PlayStation related yeah. thing in there. Yeah. There wasn't. Yeah. So, you know, Dang. you always I think you always kind of feel burned. But would you rather like this is kind of back to what we were talking about before. Would you rather have the Sony Xbox that plays only AAA yearly releases, Assassin's Creed, Call of Duty, Madden? Those yeah. are the only games released on it. Uh-huh. Or would you play the Nintendo Switch Station, which releases a small handful of indies every year, and then one or, let's say, two large triple a unique titles not yearly releases let's say like you know a zelda and then the next year is like a metroid and then the next year is mario or something that is literally my gaming habits so i'm biased to that one yeah the the latter absolutely the latter. even if it had like obviously it's gonna have way less games than the yearly let's say oh yeah i I think i think that's the reason i kind of want to get the switch is because of that but i went with the playstation 4 because uh because of the fact that they have all these games right now, right? Like, games that I haven't played. Because yeah, I just got my PlayStation 4, like, in November or something like that. Yeah, I, You weren't um, making any parallels, though. That was purely theoretical. Right. Like, yeah. Right. I'm just saying a console that's releasing much slower, larger, you know, polished, unique experiences, let's say like the Wii U did, versus like a PlayStation 4 where you're getting all those awesome. yearlies that yeah. are flooding the market but providing a lot of content... Not necessarily every year just for those titles, but in between other titles that might come out there. See, and and that's, yeah. So Wii U, I think absolutely not, right? But I think now that uh, there's seen some success like Capcom, do you know that over (laughs) uh, they sold over half a million copies of Ultra Street Fighter on the Switch? And now they're like, yeah, we're going to totally support. I know, I know, I know. It's an old game. I know. No, like to be fair, wasn't that like a launch title? And Uh, didn't the Switch have, have like... 
three good launch titles yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. Like that, they didn't have a whole lot of. There was, you know, a, a big fish in a small pond, right? Like, yeah. exactly. But I do think that uh, more titles are going there. But that's the reason I didn't go with the Switch. That's why I went with the PlayStation because of the fact, like you said, there's more variety and there's more games, that's more AAA games point. that come out on those systems mm-hmm. versus the Switch, which. I uh, had a small trickle of... I mean, now I think more developers are going I, to, but it was untested. They I didn't think know. we are as close to a well-balanced ecosystem as far as the big three are concerned Yeah, as we've ever seen. I know a lot of people are talking about how PlayStation's starting to just pick up any old McDroid or whatever. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like that game right? a little bit, but... What uh, you know, it, I'm just saying, like, you know, 99-cent titles oh, that, you know, it's yeah. just like... <sighs> Oh, okay. yeah. But, yeah, but I mean... The I, unity that <laughs> right into the... Right into... Yeah, so I want, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put another one out here. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Here's another theoretical, right? It's similar to the last one, okay? You got, you got the one system that releases the yearly uh, titles, the Assassin's Creed Call of Duties, in the quality they're at, right? So yeah. AAA, basically, yeah. yeah. Um, and then... The other system, you have those indies and those multi-year games, but you're taking a risk with the quality of them. Would you rather have the one that's known solid quality or the one that's possibly really good, possibly really bad, but has a more diverse amount of games? Uh, you know, I, I kind of relate this to my 3DS. <clears throat> I love my 3DS. I actually play that more than my PlayStation 4. And because there is much more variety of games... On the 3DS? What? Yeah. Really? I think so. There's a lot of games on the 3DS. Uh, I must be biased. <laughs> I have a lot of games on the 3DS. Maybe not an amount, but certainly style. Because yeah. they use the mechanic to their own sort of imagination. Yeah. That there certainly are different styles of games. Now, I will say that I, I do tend to lean towards RPGs. And <laughs> the 3DS is really a good RPG machine. Mm-hmm. And there's just a ton of them on there. Um, but... I feel like there's a lot more variety of... And I do think that like the indie games that are on the Nintendo systems are a lot better than the indie games on like Xbox 360 for sure. Like, re- there was some really? really? No, there were some really bad... St- no, I'm talking about like the, Actually, like the, the really like um, budget games. I'm you're talking, talking about, really about games. R- like in RPGs and then also talking about like downloadable titles and stuff. And I think you'd like the Vita just as well, if not more. Oh, yeah. You'd love the Vita. Actually. Yeah, yeah to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> really? That is exactly what that is. Oh, you really? would like it sleep is. with that under your pillow. Like, <laughs> yeah. Truthfully, too. Yeah, I'm saving up for Vita now. Nice. Yeah. No, I. But I, I really do. I love the. I love. Uh, I love my 3DS because I have more games on my 3DS than I do on, on my PlayStation 4. And PlayStation 3, I have a lot more games because of the, uh, the fact that I have the, um, PlayStation Plus subscription. Do you get a lot of indies through PlayStation Network? I do. Now? Th- through non like PS Plus. Oh, through like, PlayStation. Do you go you mean? out and buy them? Oh, I thought you meant through the. I thought you threw meant through 3DS. Oh, through PlayStation. Yeah. No. Those uh, sales. Those sales. Well, game. like not even through sales. Do you just go out and yeah. browse for indies out on PlayStation? Network? Well, I don't. I don't. Do they? Do they? They don't make it real easy for you to find indie games, do they? Kind of. I mean, it's not listed. Do they have like? I don't think it's not indie listed. Games. Like, they used to. Nintendo's Three- like, hey, look at these ni- the Nindies. And yeah, like, they do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now that, now yeah. there's so many. They, it used to be a lot easier in that sense, but then when it's like indie, 694 titles. There's, a, it, there's it so like, much out yeah, there now. Oh, really? See, that's the thing I think with the that I noticed between like the PlayStation and the PlayStation Network and the Nintendo Network, like from a 3DS perspective, is that like they have the same uh, percentages of okay to garbage games because yeah. if you look on the 3DS, there's some really weird oh, stuff there out there that's like. Someone built this in like Unity and just pushed this like, out uh, there. Like what the Ice Ice Zombie Z? Yeah, some of those <laughs> yeah. these really yeah. strange like <laughs> just push them out to get a game out there kind of thing. Yeah, like that same percentage is there, but the amount of games I feel is much larger on PlayStation Network than the 3DS Network. And I don't know be. why. Maybe it's just their store is terrible. But if you go on the the 3DS store, yeah, you only get like four or five like pages yeah. of. Games, yeah. And PlayStation, you can sit there for like hours and hours, and it just keeps going. Yeah. But like I said, it's going to have a higher amount of crap games because the percentage is oh, man. similar, but there's a larger catalog. 
Yeah. Um, and, and, only, and Jake's right. The only time that I have bought really truly indie games is when they're on sale. I'm like, oh... And and it's and I had to have heard of it too. Like, I'm pretty guilty. Blue Rider. <laughs> like well, now the sales are so frequent, though it's hard for me to pull the trigger when it's fourteen ninety nine or twenty nine. But they have been doing a lot more points. of that. Um, what do they call them? Like uh, indie bundles, where they'll do like mm-hmm. Firewatch and some other game mixed in together. No doubt. Yeah, absolutely. I, I this is a side topic, but I think if I didn't uh, like kind of follow like devs and stuff like that yeah. I probably wouldn't pull the trigger on most games like that most games yeah. in general but yeah because when I see Campo indie- Santos you gotta give it to them though I mean, yeah like if I see a game and it like it looks like pretty the graphics are okay the gameplay looks decent from what I've seen I don't like to spoil a game so I don't watch too much coverage about it yeah um, and the concept seems good then I'll pick it up because and if it's a developer like either I know or I played a game or I <clears throat> heard something about yeah i'll be like oh full price yeah here i'll give them money because i know they're going to get a cut of that and it's going to be a bigger cut than if you know it's on sale for 99 cents versus 14.99 yeah more choices are always good as long as it isn't too saturated with crap and i think as of right now it's not too saturated with you crap. don't think so i i don't think again the big three if we're talking about consoles compare that to like Steam, I think we're in well, a safe zone. Definitely. Yeah, that's true. Because I don't really actually do any PC gaming at all. Yeah. And I, I, I can imagine Steam is just plastered with garbage. Oh, yeah. yeah it's either you know it's awesome or good luck. <laughs> yeah. PlayStation is getting there. Well, that's the thing. I think it's becoming harder and harder for quality indie developers to get their names out there. When you have, look, We talked about this yeah. when the, you know, the early release or... Um, yeah. uh, you know, that that topic we talked about a couple couple weeks ago, yeah, where you know you might have a game out there and then it's like on it's just a flash in a pan, right? Yep. And for like a second, and then it's gone. Like, well, that could have been a cool game, but nobody knows about it because of the fact that just literally hundreds more games came Man. out in like the next day, like, in like twenty four hours. I love mm-hmm. the guys, and I literally have every single one of their titles, but. We're ready to, like, title number 40-something for Limited Run, and they've been around for, like, two years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and how many indie games are, like, the best game that came out that year? In two years, 40 titles? There's probably some stuff out of that that doesn't deserve to have that, like, eternal physical release. So yeah. I think that they're doing it both digitally and now even physically, yeah. where you're right. Maybe it is becoming mm-hmm. a little oversaturated. Yeah, uh, what, to your point, Roger, about um, you said something about like the the crap indie games. Oh, I totally lost it. Oh, I think it was what we were talking about in the last podcast or the couple previous ones. But I wonder about that when you watch someone covering a bad game. You watch yeah. a Jim Sterling or someone on YouTube covering a garbage game on Steam saying, look how bad this is. Oh, my God, this is unplayable for a 10-minute video where he's saying, it's so bad and so bad. And then, you know, his subscribers all run over and they just, like, crap post all over that Steam page and just take it down and garbage. Like, what if he spent 10 minutes on, like, a great game versus spending it on this garbage game and sent that traffic positively towards... I've always thought that about the most popular... Which kind of runs over that limited run thing where limited run might be just pushing out game after game after game and like being like, oh, this is a great release, this is a great release, and like maybe there should be one that's pulled in that deserves a physical release because it was such a good game versus one getting a physical release just, I don't know, for some other reason. I don't know what makes them pick It really did start... You know, I mean, we're talking Odd World and and uh, Zeo Drifter comes to mind. Of course, Saturday Morning oh. RPG because they made it. But like, you know, like really good. Even mm-hmm. Octodad because of how unique it yeah. was. Like it was like, uh, you know, basically the pinnacle of like Goat Simulator, but with the story. Yeah. I don't know. Like, um, so like th- they did kind of have a knack for that. Um, Dear Esther uh, was one that I feel like should I had a physical release. So, like, without ranting on too long, like, uh, I do feel like they had the right idea. But again, uh, you know, contracts, this or that, whatever, whatever the case might be, like, they totally got in over their heads where uh, even in the physical realm, they're they're making it hard to hard to follow that. Yeah, I don't know. Nah. Yeah, we were, were gonna say something else. I was gonna say no. one, one last thing about that, though. I, I do think that that's just 
I, I mentioned this before, but I think that's human nature to like, uh, unfortunately, uh, to attract the negative uh, yeah. reviews. To versus, focus on the negative. Yeah. I mean, yeah. because if you come, oh, this is a great game. Oh, yay, that's a great game. I mean, I, people like to just rip on things. In In the same way, it's bad that like big companies will focus on pounding something into the ground until yeah. people are sick of it. Yeah. That's what happened yeah. with Guitar Hero and that's what we're talking about with yeah. Assassin's Creed and Call of Duty and yeah. stuff. Like it's it's hard to hard to think of a comedic antonym to Lewis Black. You know mm. what I mean? Where he yeah. stands there and he complains about the way the world is and like how could you do that if you're talking in a positive light? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, hey, the, the, guys, you ever you ever have a great day? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a really good point because you're right. I'm just of... giving you a good time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah, right? <laughs> no, I think it that's... doesn't happen. I think that's a really good point that it's harder for people to joke about something that's good, right, than to like really rip on something that's really bad. It's a lot easier to be sarcastic yep. and mean about something, right? Monkeys show their teeth when they're uncomfortable. Smile. Yeah, good point. Yeah. <laughs> that's why it's so easy to be like every year. Games come out. <laughs> Yearly games are bad. That's why I said we should talk about how they're good. Yeah. Boom. Full Boom. circle. Nice job. <laughs> Brought it back. Uh, all right. Well, let's talk about then uh, the games that we're playing. Cool. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Jake. I had like a mini short list. I can just remember them because uh, I'm doing... I, I, I brought up Katamari because I played that on PS3 again. Yeah. Oh, it's so good to go back to that. Plus, I don't have all the cousins, so there's still, like, I, I haven't platinumed yet. But... Never played one of those games. Uh, I've always wanted to. Either. Just the tank control, like, just go and roll crap up and think about the philosophy behind it. I nice. love it. Oh, Katamari. How to play um, that game. Yep. And actually, I'll leave it at that. Uh, other stuff uh, is pretty Tower monotonous. Guns. We, we, yeah, of you course. Just, I, this was actually kind of fun <laughs> the other night. You were streaming... I said, you, you should stream onto our uh, YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he jumped on and was streaming. And I was watching. It was really weird because usually it's you watching me play games. Yeah. This time I was watching him play. And the whole time I'm like, what? why did you play this game, Jake? I love it. It's just <laughs> bullets go coming at you. And the whole time he's like, oh, no, I'm better than this. No, really, I'm better than <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, that that's 11.30 at night for yeah, you yeah. Yeah, on a weekday. But yeah. yeah, I don't know. I guess a little Tower of Guns, a little of that. There's more. McDroid, I tried that. And also got past the title screen of Deponia. Yeah. But not much further than that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like those point and click if it's like really like it, the cartoony art style. It's cool for a while, you yeah. know what I mean? But if I got to think too hard, it's like, might as well think and make money instead or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Burn it out on a game. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Matt, I know you've been busy with game dev. Yeah, I haven't played anything. I don't think. I can't think of anything other than working on dev stuff. Yeah. That's awesome. My, my Good excuse. Let's say my, uh, it's non-gaming thing. I'll just mention it quick. I did get my first subscription box. Yeah. This last week, you know, like a monthly, like like a loot crate, but it's for books, so it's not gaming related <laughs> at all. Yeah. So I got that. That's kind of cool. Yeah, you're becoming cultured like Jake. <laughs> yeah. I don't well, even I, read. So yeah, I'm doing a lot of reading uh, in my spare time outside <laughs> of game dev because, like, if you follow, okay, this is really nerdy. Hideo Kojima, yeah, yeah. made Metal Gear Solid and stuff. Yeah. He's really big into movies, somewhat books but really movies he always wanted to be a director and stuff yeah so he always kind of made gave me the inspiration that you can take other forms of media to inspire your game dev and stuff like that nice. so i'm using like books to kind of do that yeah that's cool sweet yeah nice horror books scary so roger what are you playing what am i playing i have been playing animal crossing more because you know that's what that's what my family does we play animal crossing uh, so I played that, and then uh, I did make it farther in uh, Kid Trip. I'm mm. on four two now. You That's... still haven't beaten that game. No. I'm, oh my gosh, I'm not good at that game at all. I, I'm waiting to beat it and then see what my final score is because it's gonna be a lot of lives that I used. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm not good at platforming games. Yeah. How's that? Uh, Final Fantasy twelve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't touch it, did you? I turned it on. I made it past the title screen. <laughs> I don't think we talked about this on the podcast, but we went to Jake's store the other week. Yeah. And he had two copies of Final Fantasy XII, whatever, remastered, yeah. Zodiac Age. Yeah. And one was like the regular copy and one was like the special edition copy. And they were pretty much the same price. They were the they same were like, price, yeah. Yeah. 
And then I was like, man, I really should have bought that. And then we get in your car and we're driving down the road. And I'm like, dang it, I should have bought that game. And then like a day or two later, you're like, I bought that game. <laughs> and it was the copy I wanted too. You know, Jake said, oh, you buying this for Matt? I said, no, I'm buying it for myself. And now you haven't even touched it. No, I. it's actually in my PlayStation. Did you just install it and leave it there? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Sacrilege. Oh, my gosh. I have been playing uh, Elite Dangerous, which okay. is, have you, do you know anything about that game? Uh, no. It's a space game. That's all I know. It's a space game. Um, what's kind of fun about it is, you know, it, it's actually a pretty high learning curve. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're in a ship and then you fly to, I mean, this world, I mean, the universe is huge in that game. Like, yeah. there's so much. Uh, and so I just made it to a place, uh, a PlayStation. I made it to a, a space station and docked my ship, which actually took me a while to figure it out, but mm-hmm. got it. And then you can pick up different missions. So you can either, there's, it's just open world. It's a sandbox game, sandbox yeah. space game. Uh, so you can like take people, uh, passengers, they, they, well, I want to be chartered over here and do this, or I can do cargo. Uh, and then it'll tell you like, there's different factions in the game. So if you do certain things, you'll get higher factions with different, um, Groups or uh, yeah. uh, in the game, different factions in the game, and uh, and one of them, one of the passengers was like, may, he may be wanted. <laughs> like, oh, well, that's interesting, you know. <laughs> he may be wanted. Yeah. So when you take, well, then there's also like some of the cargos. Like, you may be at risk of being attacked by pirates if you take this cargo. Do you know anything in this game, or is it always maybe? Uh, well, I think. Well, I mean, because part of it is because the world is the universe is so vast. That you might not run into anybody, but you might run into... Like, I actually run into a couple ships. But there's people I've been so watching... Even even the gameplay is a maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. If you press yeah. the stick, maybe, maybe your character will move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a the... random dice throw every, <laughs> yeah. throw every time you do anything. <laughs> yeah. Press every X button. and it just doesn't jump. Yeah. You're like, oh, well, you failed, every yeah. button. you failed your button check. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that'd be a great game, by the way. Yeah. Game Jam game. Yeah. <laughs> so meta. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the one thing that people have been complaining about this game is, well, some people complain about it, is like, well, there's no real story to it. There's no plot to it. Yeah. And a lot of it is you kind of make up your own story to it. Oh, you mean um, like Madden? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like Madden. Yes, you make up storylines in Madden. You do. I mean, to be honest, like you listen to people, sorry to bring this back to the hot topic, but you listen to people who like watch sports because I'm not a big sports guy. Yeah. And they're like, there's arcs in the season. Like yeah, it's like a, are. it's like a comic sure. book or something. There's like a big okay. arc and like, yeah, man. Yeah. Stories in sports. You know, uh, side note on that. <laughs> when I first met you, I thought you were a huge, huge sports fan because you have a Jay Cutler. You had a Jay Cutler sweat. Uh, do you know he doesn't play for the Bears anymore? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so also for anyone who doesn't know, my closet is filled with jerseys of people who aren't on that team anymore. <laughs> I have an Urlacher Bears jersey. He's yeah. retired. Yeah. I have a LeBron Miami jersey. He's in Cleveland now. At, these are at all least at the, now. Yeah, these are all at the time of yeah. recording this, yeah. obviously. Cutler Bears jersey. He's in Miami. Yeah. And uh, a Monty Ball Wisconsin Badgers jersey, which after he graduated ended up in some legal trouble Yeah, there. Well, he so. played for the Broncos. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he he stuck on the Badgers team until he moved on. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, they're, they're, but yeah, everyone, no one, no one in my jersey selection plays for that team anymore. <laughs> so, did you did you just dropped out of sports fandom, or how? Did, what? No, I've never been a sports fan. Yeah. So, ever. just like awkward Christmas gifts. No, see, like, <laughs> yeah, how do you get like a big color jersey? <laughs> Aren't those so, expensive? Yeah. No, that that one wasn't. I mean, oh. that because well, like, it was Jay Cutler. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was one of the like ones they hawk at like. He's the just state... gonna kill it this year. That's like the one. <laughs> yeah, God, the ones that they like hawk at the state fair and stuff. Oh, okay. Like the really cheap ones. Yeah, that's yeah. what that one is, and that's okay. why I bought that one. No, it's because at work, if you pay a certain amount every yeah. year, you can wear jerseys on Friday. And I hate wearing like button ups and collared shirts like they make us wear. Yeah. So that was like my way of not having to do that. <laughs> nice. Just be like a fake sports fan. That's like when I campaigned for a particular presidential candidate in 2008 when they told us we couldn't, but we could dress up for anybody at Halloween. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was like, exactly. I'm going to dress up as a somebody supporter. It's like the ultimate form of being a poser. <laughs> yeah. It's great. It's funny. Uh, all right, well, let's talk about how people can get a hold of us. Uh, so, Matt, why don't you start us off? Uh, Twitter, at Matt Christian, M-A-T-C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. 
Um, yeah, or Submatter Games on YouTube if you want to catch catch the monthly vlog. <clears throat> nice, Jake. I'll be uh, playing more and more on our channel yeah. for Gamer I'm Heads. Cool. I'm, yep. I'm excited about that. Yeah, on YouTube. That's nice. going to be fun. Uh, of course, I got the Instagram, Start Save Games, uh, Studly Omelette on um, <clears throat> PlayStation Network is another great way to get a hold of me. And of course, you can say hey on the, the Facebook page. Yeah, I got another fake message on my PlayStation, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, I haven't turned mine on, so I wouldn't know. Oh, we did nice. get a normal message. We did? Didn't we? A on question? The oh, yeah, for... we do. Well, 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 I forget. We'll have to cover that uh, after people can get a hold of us. And, yeah, you can get a hold of us. Send us questions. Uh, you can send us a direct message on Twitter or even tweet us. Uh, GamerHeadsPC. That's at Twitter. Uh, you can get a hold of us on Facebook, which is GamerHeads Podcast. Uh, watch us on our YouTube channels. Uh, our YouTube channel. YouTube, not channels, but channel. Uh, it's Gamerheads Podcast. Just look that up. We're going global. We're, We're going to have global, people yeah. play for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you can send us questions like actually uh, the Four Horses did here. Let me pull this up here. Um, and their question for this week was, uh, should digital stores ever have sales? Uh, Whoa. Uh, are they a slap, are, slap in the face of early adopters? That's a good question. Early adopters? Yeah. Like, so, for instance, I buy the game at $15. And then, you know, a month or two goes by, and then it's on sale for six. Oh, okay. You know, to to come at that from a similar but slightly different angle, I've considered that as a developer who knows that Steam early access is a possibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Putting a game out under Steam early access, let's say for $5, and then as more content is built in the game, because, again, early access game is being developed as you're, you know, you own it. Right bringing that amount up as you add more content. So the early adapters would get it at a cheaper cost. Yes. Yep. And then, you know, later on, sales will bring it down. Sure. So I was going to say, I think there's a sort sort of checks and balances to that where, and I guess he's talking just digitally, right? Correct. Okay. So that does change things a little bit. Um, But even, again, thinking from the console side of things, uh, I do feel like... Oftentimes, there are certain perks to signing up early. For example, a premium edition of a game where you'll get all of the content later sure. for a cheaper value or oh, yeah. or um, a beta, early access. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's the checks and balances where certain things are built in to people who pre-order. Heck, 20% off if you get a physical copy. And I know I'm going back to that. But yeah. again, there always seems to be some sort of incentive for people uh, be it it comes with the soundtrack or whatever, sure. And then eventually there's an edition that's just straight just up vanilla. Straight up, yeah. I think I think for me, like uh, I think it's Mass Effect Andromeda has been on sale a few few times in the PlayStation Network. And if you look at that versus the like <coughs> gold edition or whatever they call it, uh, yeah. it's like two or three dollars more for that edition. Far Cry is the same way. Like Far Cry, the standard game when it's on sale is like maybe twenty bucks, and then like the full edition is like twenty three, and you're like. Yeah. The only difference is like, at, it, at launch it was like twenty dollars more, and the only difference is you get some like in-game stuff. You know, sure. this isn't this isn't talking about game of the year edition where you get all the DLC and stuff. This is just like your launch day bonuses. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like well, in that sense, I definitely would wait personally. But yeah. And and that's I guess what I was getting at before with the whole Madden thing. Yeah. Was exactly like that. Like maybe someday we can get into this kind of like. DLC based thing, but for the most part, people are willing to pay full price for a game that's eventually going to be six dollars. Like literally, mm-hmm. late, in less than three hundred sixty-five days, that game's going to go from sixty to six dollars, and they still buy it for sixty. Yeah, and and so as long as that's the case, uh, digitally speaking, I think great. You know, whatever. Like there are people who want to play it. Yeah, like I, I'll always be like that for. A certain subset of games, I will always buy them when they come out. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, no, I think I think like with for me, uh, I do like buying games if it's uh, if it's a developer that I follow, and they come up with a game, I will always buy it day one because mm-hmm. uh, I want to support them. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, it's interesting because uh, there was uh, their previous game, actually Forrest's previous game, day one it was ninety nine cents, and then. I think they had a window of 15 days. I, I don't remember. I'll, he'll have to let me know. But then it w- went up to like $1.99. Mm-hmm. 
which is mm-hmm. still not a lot of money. But uh, so I thought that was kind of interesting that it was uh, cheaper. You know, the entry level was cheaper. But then all those people who downloaded it at a, at a cheaper price, I mean, they have friends. You know what I mean? True. They talk about it and whatever. That yeah. like I think sales are integral to any sort of model. I do think it's strange in the digital realm that something can be 10% of what it was uh, within the past two years. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you don't really see that in the physical realm. Like, it's on clearance. It used to be 90 Now it's $9. Like, it just doesn't happen that way. Yeah. But you, you do see that in, in digital games. So Yeah. Uh. I think uh, with digital, there's also a convenience factor. Yeah. Like, that comes into play for me, at least. And yes. I'm sure it's with everyone. Yes. Like, you're sitting on the couch being like, well, I could go to Jake's store and get it, get this game. Or I could just be like, hit X. And then yeah. just sit here and eat Cheetos and watch, yeah. like, yeah. Stranger Things while the game downloads. Yeah. And, oh, it's done. Now I'm going to play it. Yeah. You know? That's absolutely true. Like, so sometimes I'll just buy a game, you know, full price. Because, one, I want it pretty soon after it launches. And, two, I'm just going to get it because it's convenient to download it that way. Yeah. After a while, I've learned to consider whether I'm going to sell that game back or not. Sure. That's where a physical copy comes in in my yeah. mind. Yeah. If you're going to be yeah. done, you're going to be done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I agree. I'm the same way. If you support the developer, if you like the developer or the IP or any of that stuff, support it. That yeah. said, I should say that sales can be dangerous. You know what I mean? Like if they overdo it to the point where... Earlier in this podcast, I did straight up say, like, you know, it's going to be on sale someday. Why don't you just wait until it's on sale? Yeah. yeah. That, you know, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of consumers that think that way. Well, but again, I think that core, fa- that core fan base, they, they keep it going. Yeah, we'll see. And, and then, to be fair, that like even going back to the wrestling games, right? I never buy, I never buy those <clears throat> games full price. But I you wait. buy them every year. Uh, I, I bought... Four. So I bought four in the last you know, five years. I like think. ironically, those games don't go on sale as like as great of deals as other games do. It is yeah. true. Call actually. of Duties and stuff are rarely ever a good yeah. price. They're almost always dropped down to like maybe ten dollars. Yeah. If you're looking at like a digital thing, like mm. from yeah. Activision and stuff. Maybe yeah. the Maddens and some of the, the sports games, maybe a little bit more, like a four ninety nine to a ten dollar if it's two years old to one yeah. year old. But yeah, those those games don't drop as much. But interesting that you said that though, because digitally Madden, the last year's Madden was fifteen on a sale just a couple weeks right. ago. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Usually it's like the last year is like fifteen to twenty and then like two years because I noticed it with like I think it was one of the wrestling <laughs> games. Yeah. Is like Five yeah. to ten. Yeah. Y- you know. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Get a hold of us. Uh, thanks, uh, Mick, for asking that mm-hmm. question. And yeah, you, you as listeners can also get a hold of us. It doesn't have to be game related. If you have a question for us that's not game related, we would be happy to answer those questions too. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Don't get too personal now. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, everyone. And for Jake and Matt and myself, thanks, everyone, for listening. And now our interview with Four Horses. Welcome, Mick. For uh, thanks for taking uh, time out of your schedule and meeting with me and doing the interview. I really appreciate that. No problem at all. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself. What got you into doing game dev, and what inspired your name for Four Horses? Um. Really, game dev. I I was born in the early seventies, so I sort of grew up through the uh, birth of of commercial video gaming. Um, sort of remembering seeing Space Invaders and the like in the arcades, and and being fascinated by the fact that uh, with games you could control the pictures that are on the TV. It was it was sort of the technology behind it. I think originally that that got me interested. Um, so I. Uh, like like many kids of my age, we ended up with a home computer, and one of the things that a yeah, typical bedroom programmer story really, um, we'd we'd type listings in out of magazines and fix the bugs and pull them apart, try and work out how how they were doing what they'd do, and before we knew it, you would you'd just learn to program. So <laughs> that, that's that's sort of really what happened there. Um, nice. A bit more about myself. I didn't mention I'm a parent myself uh, i've previously worked in a video game retail store and i'm a developer so i'm sort of all three of you rolled into one <laughs> nice nice yeah actually uh i was born in the 70s as well so like, we have a lot in common in that 
in that respect of playing the arcade games, remembering arcades, actually. Because I talked to, like, Matt and Jake, and they're like, I don't remember arcades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, arcades were big in my life, definitely. Um, oh, yeah, me too. But the, the Four Horses, the name for Four Horses, that came from my grandfather. Uh, he, he had various unrepeatable stories that he used to tell, uh, and one of them included a, a, the phrase Four Horses, and it, it sort of, we decided we, we were choosing between that and No More Magic, which came from an equally inappropriate story. Um, <laughs> and, and Four Horses won out, so... Nice. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and how long have you been creating games? Well, since I was about 10, in terms of writing things that could be classed as games, um, but doing it professionally, I started in about the year 2000, uh, I not initially creating them. I managed to talk my way into the games industry as a tester. Um, someone, <laughs> a friend, sort of suggested that I'd be good as a tester because I used to play games to destruction, and I, I seem to think of the, at the time of the games industry as being this mythical fantasy place that that no one really actually worked there. Games just came out of <laughs> unicorn farts or something. I don't know. So <laughs> to to prove him wrong. Um, I sort of applied for a job and, and ended up getting it. Uh, I wasn't really expecting to. And while I was there, I just sort of demonstrated that I could program and, and try to work my way into a developer role, which it took a little while. Uh, and it was actually the creation of Digger Dan that, uh, that ended up basically showing people that, yes, I can do this. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, and your first game actually was on the DS, right? Yeah, DSi. DS. It was yeah. it developed on the DS as a homebrew project, um, but then obviously digital publishing came along, so the DSi was an easy way to actually get it out under customers' noses. Nice. And I, I know this, but uh, for our listeners, uh, Dan is your son's name, right? Like, that was named after your son? That's that's absolutely right, yeah. And nice. also, other bit of trivia about my son, Kid Trip launched on his birthday this year. <laughs> that's awesome. That's really cool. Um, and so we, you kind of mentioned this already, but your games have like a retro feel to them so that your inspiration comes from your gaming background then. Is that correct? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, I remember when the advent of 3d came along and there seemed to be a few games that try to transition from 3d, uh, 2d to 3d and they didn't really work. I mean, everyone hails Mario 64 as a classic, but when you play Mario 64, it doesn't play like a 2d Mario game. It's a great game. Don't get me wrong. But it's not the same experience. I think Metroids translate to 3D far better. Uh, I think that'd be a better example. Um, and it just it it felt to me like there's there's a lot more could be done with 2D that you couldn't do previously because of the restrictions of the hardware, number of sprites on a scan line and whatever. And those those barriers were starting to disappear. So plus there's simply the fact that it's considerably easier developing uh, 2D, <laughs> particularly as a small team. Sure, sure. Yeah, and your team. So that's just you, right? Yes. Uh, Four Horses is, is me, basically. Um, I'd, I'd got the 3DS version of Digger Dan finished, and uh, I I was struggling to find someone to publish it for me. At the time, it took a bit of an investment to get things published. There's the localization, which wouldn't have been too big a cost, but um, getting age ratings done is particularly expensive. So mm -hmm. I've I was been I've been sat on a finished version of it for quite a number of years, and then I ended up sat on a little bit of money, and the IA is it IARC, yeah, IARC, the Edge Rating Coalition came along, which made Edge Ratings free for downloadable products, and nice. I just decided, well, set up a company, do this myself, talk to Nintendo, see if they'll have me, and uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's where it went. Nice. So your games, I'm. Unless I'm incorrect, but I think it's only Nintendo products, right? So far, I've only published on Nintendo platforms. The The main reason for that is I, I sort of have to confess at being a Nintendo fanboy somewhat. <laughs> uh, we've got an, have we got an Xbox? We've got an Xbox somewhere in the house. Uh, we've got a PS4 as well. I love Crash Bandicoot. But what, what I would say is I love Nintendo games, and Crash Bandicoot is one of the best Nintendo games that Nintendo never made. Um... So, so yeah, the, Nintendo tend to make the sort of games I like. They, they tend to make systems that I don't know why. I, I, I just tend to prefer them to the other 
other manufacturers they, they seem to be sticking rooted a little bit in the past uh, sort of last to adopt massive online setups and not so big on well they didn't seem so big on microtransactions to start off with and, and add on content and the like although they seem to be getting there now which is a shame because they're the sort of things that I personally don't like but um but there's there'd be nothing stopping me going to the other platforms other than the the amount of time it takes then to get familiar with them and understand all the process that they're involved in getting the games through submission and out on the store shelves um i'm not against it i've just not got any real pull to do it at the minute sure sure yeah is it is it difficult to get your games listed on nintendo platforms uh, for me it wasn't but I already had a track record with them which certainly helped when it came to apply to be a developer I understand it was fairly easy to get things onto the Wii U through the, the, the some sort of web framework that they could offer I think I think people could essentially develop without the hardware and then Nintendo did whatever finishing off to get the game running on the platform if anything was involved at all um, so I think it was quite easy in those respects but for me, I've I've been on like I said, I've, I've because through my day jobs, I've uh, I've been a software developer at the uh, video game houses and published games on 3ds through them. Um, they already knew me, so so yeah, getting getting development sets there was really easy once I got the company set up. Um, Switch was a little more difficult. I sent off a couple of emails that pretty much got ignored and then i saw an announcement saying that they're now open to other developers sent off another email which seemed to get ignored and then about three weeks later they said uh yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> oh it's you okay <laughs> well, I, I dangled kid trip under the noses that's what yeah right exactly hey you got this game here <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> The truth of it is, though, at the time, I didn't have an agreement to do a Switch version, but we won't go. Nah. <laughs> so um, what obstacles have you faced as an indie developer, and, and what did you do to overcome them? Um, <clears throat> there weren't really many obstacles. Like I say, it's sort of been quite easy because of the past experience. I mean, the, the, the difficulties I have aren't, aren't any difficulties with getting access to the platforms. Um, it's more been difficulties really having spare time to do it because uh, Four Horses is entirely a part-time venture. I've got a day job that I uh, I'm contracted to 37 hours a week and get home and I just don't really want to do more stuff. Um, oh, I, I know that. <laughs> and you have a kid, right? So like, Yeah, that yeah, time I too. do. He's, <laughs> he's getting a little bit older now, though, so he's... he's burying himself behind headphones and a laptop screen a lot so that makes life slightly easier i can become a bad parent and not feel too gilly about it <laughs> um, so does he play your games by the way does he uh he, does he's he played play? kid trip a lot more than digger dan which sort of irks me because i don't see kid trip as being my game so much um <laughs> i'd like to think at some point he'll he'll get around to playing digger dan and complete it i'm just keep trying to goad him into it saying well hey, yeah i understand it's too difficult for you <laughs> Nice. So, sorry, I, I, I cut you off, didn't I? I? Did you have anything else that you wanted to say about that, that question? Uh, the difficulties of getting developed. You know, it's, like I said, more than anything, it's just the time. Uh, it's, it, it can feel a little bit of a struggle, I suppose, getting used to the new API. I've, I've just this morning got the Switch version of Kid Trip working with uh, pretty much any con controller configuration you want to throw at it. And there was there was some problems I had there that were sort of frustrating me somewhat but then there's no one to bounce things off and, and help me really I've just got the forums uh, the sort of private Nintendo forums post up there if I get desperate and then wait a few hours for maybe getting a response but um, so far I've, it's going alright nice yeah yeah. I, I would assume that probably is the most difficult part is because uh, I work in IT as well right. and the nice thing with with where I'm at, if I have problems, I can throw ideas off other people. What being, you know, your own company. Yeah, uh, it's just me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> very much so. Very much so. The, I mean, the admin side of the company is horrible. I had to do my uh, company tax returns last week or so. I'd, oh, that was a painful process. But oh, I'm sure <laughs> that, that's too boring to go into now. <laughs> so this week's topic has to do with AAA games in the gaming industry. Uh, and we asked uh, if it harms or helps the game industry with yearly releases of AAA games. 
So as an indie game developer, how do you see yourself fitting into the gaming industry? And what do you think of release yearly releases of AAA games? Does it help or hurt the gaming industry? And, and also as an indie game developer, does that help or hurt you? I, I think in general, um, AAA release... I mean, by AAA, we're talking quality of the title or the budgets, the size? Um, well, so we're talking... Uh, we talked more about like um, the Maddens, the the Call of Duties, the Assassin Creeds, um, th- those those publishers that come out with uh, those AAA games every year, pretty much. Uh, versus like the maybe the Naughty Dogs. I mean, they come out with games, but that's not yearly. That's typically like every three to four years. So it's more the schedule. I I, I don't really think. Any release particularly can harm the industry as long as it's of of, of a good quality. Really, the the more good quality games there are out there, the more people hopefully will get drawn into uh, into the industry as players, and therefore the more customers there are, the more money there is floating around for everyone. Um, I <clears throat> I think if the quality starts to slip, then that can sort of damage the industry and maybe turn people off and. Uh, essentially turn customers away but I, I, I don't really see it affecting me so much I think the the biggest problem that affects my business is uh, visibility sure. Get, getting my title seen by enough people uh, in, in what seems to be a very crowded marketplace particularly on 3DS but I think even on Switch even though it's only like six months old it just feels that it's getting very crowded there's news of new releases just about every day uh, more things appearing on the eShop and uh yeah, as a as a small developer, that that is a worry. Yeah, and it's interesting that you said that because we talked about um, the fact that Wii U probably struggled with the fact that they didn't have as many releases. Um, you know, so the AAA games probably came out once every couple of years, and yeah. independently, like there wasn't a whole lot of third party or independent games on the Wii U, and I think that's why it struggled. And it's interesting to hear you say that the Switch already six months in. And you feel like the space is crowded already. Yeah, it sort of feels like it. There's, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it purely from a very selfish point of view. <laughs> Every other person's game that's coming onto the eShop is going to be competing with mine so they can clear off, as far as I've got to say. <laughs> um, I, I, I might have that wrong. I think it's, it may just be paranoia from the fact that uh, the, the uh, Kid Trip hasn't performed as well as I would have expected on the eShop so far, on the 3DS that may change if the title goes on sale at some point um, the, the biggest problem I have, and this is one of the barriers I should have possibly mentioned before the biggest problem I have is I have no experience of the marketing side of things I have no experience of the sales side or the I have no idea what to expect in terms of sale figures, so I get these ideas in head that I put one game out and I'll be retiring next week, <laughs> and then it doesn't come true, and yeah. uh, and then I start wondering what I did wrong. Uh, um, but um, yeah, I I I I'm just getting very nervous seeing the number of releases that are coming out on Switch that that are getting lined up. They, like I said, they just seem to be appearing every other day. Yeah, and uh, uh, eShop's going to be getting full. Yeah. Which isn't a bad thing for Switch owners. Sure, absolutely. Uh, but I think I think one thing that uh, Kid Trip has going for it is that it has that uh, 2D platformer feel, obviously, that uh, people are saying, boy, we wish we had a 2D platform Mario-type game on the Switch. So I think that's what it has going for it. I hope so. I yeah. really hope so. I think it's definitely going to do better on Switch than it has done on 3DS so far. And there's there's also Japan as well. It might do okay in Japan on on 3ds. Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, let's go into that. Your new game, uh, Kid Trip, is out on 3ds right now, and then on Switch yes. soon. Um, yeah. How did that project come about? Well, sit back. It's a long story. <laughs> uh, many many years ago, I can't really remember how I ended up discovering the site, but the possibly just looking for game help but i discovered the nintendo life website and ended up on the forums there and at some point i, I sort of spotted some pixel art by this kid that, that, that he was sort of doing for people and posted who's doing little character avatars for them and the like and I, I soon discovered something about him that he sort of makes his own games but he never finishes them 
Uh, he gets he gets so far with them and then sort of gets bored or gets distracted, moves on to something else. And there was a lot of there was a lot of uh, clamouring on the forums for him to get a game finished. And he was posting up screenshots of this uh, game he was working on at the time, which was Kid Trip. Mm. And uh, at the time, I was working for a developer publishing on 3DS. I think I'd got Digger down up and running on 3DS by then. And I said to him, I said if you do get that game finished and you'd like to see it on a proper platform instead of a phone, give me a shout. I'll do your 3DS version. And uh, he seemed quite keen. Um, one of the barriers at the time would have been the fact that we would have had to get someone else to publish it for us, um, which would have sort of split the share. And again, like I said, the cost of localization and uh, age ratings would have been an issue. So I think he was put off a little bit by that. Um, about two years after that, I think he did actually get it published on iOS. It, it took it still took a while, and I contacted him again about a 3DS version, and he said, "Oh, well, I've sort of spoken to someone else about doing that," and I was, "Oh, okay." Um, many years later, in fact, this year, in about January, I was chatting to a colleague at work, and he just mentioned this game on his iPhone that he really liked. Uh, and it was Kid Trip, and it sort of reminded me of the game's existence. And I thought, well, where's this 3DS version? Yeah. So I, I contacted Mike again and said, you know, 3DS version, what's happening with it? He says, well, they're supposed to be doing that. I've sent them the source code, but I've not heard anything since. I'm getting a bit frustrated with the lack of communication, but I'm, I'm busy doing the sequel at the minute, so I'm not that worried about it. And I, I basically talked him into letting me loose on the source code with no guarantees whatsoever. Uh, and I had the game up and running on 3DS in three weeks wow. uh, and he was pretty much blown away wow. so he he contacted these other people and basically made the decision that they weren't going to proceed with it oh and, and I did wow so uh, that's how it came about wow and, and is and is he pleased with the uh, with the with the final product yeah he's extremely pleased with it he's um I mean, I made quite a few number of changes to it. Um, for example, I mean, just localization for one. It didn't, his version didn't support multiple languages, and I gave him access to the source repository as well, so he could see what I was doing. Sure. Um, so he, he saw a number of things, and he basically said, "I've done a much more professional job than him," which I was quite pleased to hear. <laughs> yeah. But, um, there were other little things as well. I I came up with a system of recording my inputs. And then if I failed at a level, I just when it started the, the level again, it would play back the inputs that I'd done previously, and I could interrupt it and say, "Okay, this is where I messed up. I'll take over from here." And uh, that way, I could get a perfect playthrough, a recording of all the key inputs to do a perfect playthrough from start to finish. Nice. Uh, but I, I convinced him that that was actually AI that I'd written to play the game. <laughs> Did he believe so, it? <laughs> I think he did at first. I had to fess up. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, was, that was useful for testing just so that whenever I'd made any changes, I wanted to make sure I'd not broken anything. Just let the game go and yeah. play itself through from start to finish. Nice. Yeah, I, I remember, um, I think you may have posted saying, who can beat the score? And I said, oh, I'm going to beat that score. And you're like, yeah, good luck. <laughs> Well, actually, the the um, the score that I posted on Meverse, I stupidly I went and posted the wrong screenshot that I've grabbed. I lost a life on that one, but I have had a genuine, honest playthrough from start uh -huh. to finish with no cheats whatsoever, <laughs> with no lives lost. Nice, nice. It took a lot of effort. Yeah, yeah. I I, I gotta say, I'm stuck on four two right now. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Um. Yeah. Is there any talks of bringing Kid Trip 2 to the 3DS and Switch? Um, it's obviously been mentioned. I don't know what I'm really allowed to say because it's, uh -huh. it's not my game and I've got no agreements to do it. Uh -huh. But it's made in Unity, although it's getting pointed over to Mono Game as well okay. um, for the Steam version. Okay. Um, and I, th I think Mike's definitely keen to see it on Switch, but I sort of point out to him that's something he could do himself. Now he's got a bit of a rapport with Nintendo himself, he could just set himself up as a developer and publish it. That would I, doing a Switch port. I would feel guilty taking his money to be honest, because yeah, uh, yeah. It, it wouldn't really take much effort. Yeah, well, that was wow. That's that's really nice of you. <laughs> I do my best. <laughs> 
So uh, the other thing I saw that you created a blog where you chronicle your work on bringing Kid Trip to the Switch. So uh, we had to ask, where did you get the inspiration to make that blog first? <laughs> oh, that was totally from Matt doing his blog. Oh, was it really? No, no, oh, I'm okay. sorry. Just kidding you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Matt, yeah, oh, Matt, sorry, I had to do did that. Did you hear Matt say that in the last podcast? <laughs> I did, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Um, that that simply came from uh, way way back when Apple first launched their App Store. I remember they were showing off Monkey Ball, and they were making a big deal of the fact they got ported to the platform in just one week. And then when when Nintendo announced the Switch and they're showing some of the games that were coming along, they're saying, "Oh, they managed to port this game over in just a week." And it's the figure sort of started to stick in my head, and I thought, "Well, I wonder if I can do Kid Trip to Switch in a week." And and I wanted to make sure that I sort of recorded my, uh, recorded the time it took to do it, and also that I was motivated to actually get on and do it as well because I'd, I'd got a week booked off from work. I was going to use that week to uh, to do the conversion, and I know I would have so easily got distracted if I didn't have the uh, if I didn't have the blog as a well, I'm gonna to have to do it, otherwise people will be sat waiting for the next post and it'll never come. Yeah. Um so yeah, it was it was a little bit of a moti- motivational tool. Nice. But also it just I know people are interested in sort of seeing what goes on behind the scenes and what happens. I don't know if I really gave any sort of details people would want to know, because obviously if I'm under NDA so I can't too much can't talk too much about the inner workings of the hardware. Sure. Um but yeah, it was just a way to document and put a bit of context on these whole figures of ice so easy you can do it in a week so so i set that as a challenge and yeah it worked it was possible nice game up wow up and running fully playable start to finish in one week nice yeah that's interesting that that was used as a motivational tool to like like a challenge (laughs) almost almost like a uh like a game jam in a way yeah i guess i've never looked at it from that point of view i've never done a game jam myself i know people who do though yeah you, you should give it a shot matt just uh did a game jam uh last weekend uh and it looked interesting it looks like an interesting uh thing i used to do i write comic books and we used to do comic book jams similar so yeah, you should give it a shot yeah um <clears throat> so we reviewed kid trip and we gave it an eight out of ten and we really enjoyed the game uh when you read reviews are there times <laughs> where you shake your head in disbelief and how do you handle reviews that are not maybe favorable for the games that you make? Um, yeah, there's sometimes definitely I shake my head in disbelief. I think with Kid Trip, I mostly shake my head in disbelief that, that, at myself because I, I took out the tutorials. Um, Mike originally put the game out without any tutorials in and he, he noticed on all the comments that he was getting on the uh, app store people saying oh it's stupid i can't get past this bit and it's because they didn't understand the controls now keeping the tutorials in was just going to be a little bit of a pain on 3ds um and there's the e-manual there so i thought we, we don't need controls explaining in the game yep turns out you do <laughs> um so there's very probably going to be an update coming that uh <laughs> that puts the tutorials back in. They're going to have to go in for Switch anyway because that doesn't have the e-manuals. Oh, sure. Um, but so far, I've been fairly lucky that people have generally been pretty fearful, although I did get a review come in just in the last couple of days that that gave Kid Trip 6 out of 10 when others have sort of been 7, 8. Yeah. Um, and it just really seemed down to the fact that the reviewer didn't particularly like that sort of game, hmm. which... He's, he's a bit frustrating because to a degree a reviewer should be fairly impartial and try and judge the game on other games of the genre I would say Yeah. Um, I, I think it's perfectly fair for a reviewer to say I hate this game but I don't tend not to like this sort of game or to say I hate this game and I absolutely love this type of game Sure. but they, they tend not to do that so much I was a more extreme example and uh definitely a case where I was scratching my head for review um, a company I used to work for used to put out these hidden object puzzle games now they weren't definitely weren't my sort of game um, but the they were all built on the same code base on the same templates they were pretty much just asset flips under the uh, hood 
and they had two games out within about two months of each other that used exactly the same code base the only difference was the content the actual scenes themselves and two different reviewers on a particular website got them and one of them was I think he pretty much said that it's not his sort of thing but compared to other games in the genre it's okay and he gave it six or a seven and the other reviewer just utterly ripped it apart and gave it one (laughs) one out of ten what and and I mean that just shows how extreme it can be but this this reviewer sort of built himself up a bit of a reputation of, of being extremely critical and extremely harsh and being very clever with his words and he, he was he was going for a name for himself and being quite funny about it which that's fair enough but ultimately there's a business sort of depending on sales yeah and if you're if you're being completely unfair and ripping it apart I, personally i don't think you're a good reviewer yeah well that's an interesting thing that you said that um because we talked about that in our last episode as well uh where it feels like with youtube um, there's a lot more people like reviewing games on YouTube. And I think some of it is that they try to make a name for themselves and try to be funny. Right. And, and yeah, a lot more people tend to gravitate towards the, oh, negative pieces versus like being positive about things. And like that gets more clicks than somebody coming out and say, this is a great game and here's why. And I don't know why that is. It's just a weird phenomenon. It's probably the, same same effects where comments that you get on videos always tend people only tend to comment about things if they've got something negative to say very very rarely will people ever give positive feedback yeah so it's probably a similar mindset yeah interesting um so you're very active with the gaming community both on nintendo life which i'm also a member of and then meverse which i also am a member of uh, so what have you learned from your interactions with the gaming community and has that ever influenced in what you do in a game? Um, influenced, possibly, possibly influenced. Uh, we've, Mike was sort of keen to maybe give, uh, give a go with Kid Trip of getting rid of the auto run aspect for 3DS since you've got a better control method and I was I was dead against it, um, mainly because he spent quite a long time designing and balancing those levels around the fact that you were playing this on a screen with two buttons, and yeah. I just don't think the game would have played the same at all if you'd have had full yeah. control over the character. Um, so I, I was against it, and th- the thing that you've got to do is you've got to understand that the comments of one person are not the comments of everybody and you will never ever make a game that absolutely everybody loves so you've you've got to to a degree ignore the negative comments but not ignore them as well um obviously like i said the the comments about people not understanding the control so we've taken that on board um but what I certainly would like to do, and I've not discussed this uh, fully with Mike yet, um, but I would like to take some of the assets from Kid Trip and make a, some sort of sequel that isn't auto-run, but it's a bit more mini Metroid-like. Bit, oh, wow. A bit more exploration-based. And, and Yeah, like I say, it's not fleshed out. Don't go expecting guaranteed <laughs> releases of this game or anything. But uh, Next week, right? <laughs> oh, pretty much. <laughs> that's awesome but that's based on the fact that quite a lot of people have commented and said oh this looks really good oh it's auto runner (laughs) ah yeah yeah wow that that would be uh, amazing uh and 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 i think you're right i mean the game would have been not the same i think it would have get past four two pretty easily if it was not an auto runner yeah yeah uh, I know that I tried to influence you by adding <laughs> a level editor in Digger Dan. I still think you should do that. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, I, yeah. I sort of agree. Um, but there's not enough players out there, I'm afraid. It just, you wouldn't be able to share levels with other people over the internet so easily because there just simply wouldn't be enough of them making them. Yeah. But yeah, it, it was it was something I thought long and hard about. I've got to say. Oh, because of my question? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I don't. I'd already considered. Uh, <laughs> I'd, I'd considered it during development. Nice, nice. 
Um, so what percentage of, the, this is from Jake, actually, this question, what percentage of the workday do you spend as a business owner? And then what percentage as a developer, basically balancing the time between branding, promotions, networking, and selling your product compared to actually conceiving and building a game? Well, the, the branding, networking, and all that are all the things I'm utterly hopeless at. <laughs> um, I don't really, I, I've, it's not something I've particularly considered. I, I just... I do the things I have to do with the, the business side of things, dealing with keeping the accounts up to date and the like. I just do those as they come around and the need arises. Um, but because I don't work a nine to five job doing four horses work, it's, it's difficult to sort of break down how much time I do spend doing anything. Um, I, I do know that I need to do better with my marketing though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, that's a probably, probably the most difficult part as being an uh, indie game dev uh, is that trying to get your name out there and try to brand brand your 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 product yeah yeah i mean i have i have noticed a slight increase in sales in digger dan since kid trip went out so really I think getting more product out there yeah i think there's a i think there's an effect that people have seen kid trip and maybe done the whole oh what else has this person made which is something i've never done myself so i've never understood why that feature is ever there but um <laughs> yeah i think maybe people are doing that Nice. Unless it's just a, an anomaly. Nice, nice. Well, that's that's awesome. That's a good, uh, you know, good reaction, I guess, to to the game. That's that's nice. Uh, I also saw that Nintendo Nintendo Life gave your game a, a good score too. I think it gave it eight eight out of ten, right? They did. They gave the original Digger Dan on DSI eight out of ten as well, which nice. blew me away. I was I'd have been happy with a six. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, and then they gave a three DS one seven, which. I don't understand. Yeah, twenty five extra levels. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um. So what's next yeah. for Four Horses then? Well, um, there's a super secret project that I'm actually oh. working on now. Instead of doing Kid Trip on Switch, Whoa. um, I've been asked to do a quick port of a Unity game. It's not Kid Trip Two um, <laughs> on the Switch. So I'm I'm sort of secretly doing that and i'm not allowed to talk about it just yet okay um but i mean it's not my work anyway i can't claim anything for it but that should be appearing hopefully very soon um as i've mentioned i would like to do a collaboration with mike burns who if that wasn't clear from previous things is the original creator of kid trip um i love his artwork uh he's got good skills with designs that uh, with design that I don't have um, I, I'm fine with programming C++ which he hates so hopefully we can combine <laughs> our skills and do something together but uh, we'll have to see nice. I, I don't like to give too much away because I have, I have ideas floating around but if things don't come to fruition I don't like people to be sat expecting them I've, I've known other developers who will announce games and then get people all excited about them put a load of work in their promotion and then never deliver yeah uh, I I don't want to be that person. <laughs> yeah, no, I yeah I get that. Uh, have you ever seen that uh, that documentary on Netflix called uh, I think it's called Indie Game Dev or something something along that line? Yeah, yeah, I've se- yeah, <laughs> I have seen that. Yeah, yeah. It just every, every time I talk to a, a game developer, uh, any game developer, and it, it that that's the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, some of the. <laughs> Some of the the pains that they go through and and some of the feedback that they get when they when a game doesn't necessarily release or release on schedule. So, <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, there's, there's too many factors. It's, even so much as giving a release date, there's too many factors that are way out of my control to to, to want to even try. So I've got to I've got to get Kid Trip through Nintendo's approval process. Sure. And uh, I've never submitted a game on Switch before, so there's bound to be. There's no way it's going to pass first time. There's <laughs> bound to be something I don't know about, and yeah, it, that instantly pushes you back at least a month on your release date. So sure, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, well, Mick, how can people get a hold of you if they want to follow you or uh, reach out to you or even um, see what projects you have coming up? Uh, well, there's my website, which is fourhorses.co.uk. There's a contact form on there if anyone wants to make use of that, or they can find me on Twitter under my company name, which is at Four Horses Game. That's F O U R rather than the number four, uh-huh. or the word uh-huh. four. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, they're probably the easiest ways. 
I, I do have gamer tags that I don't use. So <laughs> that would be a complete waste of time. I don't have time to play games. <laughs> right. Yeah. Too busy developing. Yeah, I, I understand that. Um, and also, I mean, just for listeners too, if you uh, if you play the game on 3DS, we play Kid Trip or, or Digger Dan uh, DX on the 3DS, uh, you're very, uh, I guess, uh, you're very active on the Miiverse as well. So if you post... Uh, scores or if you post questions i know that you're very active on there that's a good point yeah me first yeah. um yeah if if you post to any of those two games on me first i'll i'll pick it up at some point and i'll respond if it merits a response <laughs> sounds good well thanks mick thanks so much for taking your time and and talking no with problem us. at all no problem at all thanks for having me on oh you're welcome all right thanks everyone and uh catch us on our next episode coming up uh in two weeks thanks 